Hey everybody, so I had said that I would make a super sped up version of the disassembly, and here it is. Um, I have to admit, disassembly day, not a good day. Uh, primarily because, you know, you spend all this time putting this thing together, and the last thing you want to do is take it all apart. You just kind of have to stay positive, and remember that in order to put it together the final time, you gotta take it apart. Um, because, well, you gotta dimple everything, and... That's just one of those things you have to do. There's no way to do that with it actually all assembled. So uh, we get to dimpling a little later in the video. Um, dimpling those skins, not fun. The weather outside is just stormy and abysmal, by the way. You can kind of see through the windows a little bit there. One thing that you had to do in this next step was uh, on one of the skins, and only one of the skins, you have to cut off a piece. And so that's what I'm doing here. And I was going really slowly. I mean, this is sped up quite a bit, and I was, you know, going slowly to make sure I didn't screw that up. And then went back through and deburred it because I didn't want it to be sharp. You know, I, I was less worried about it like breaking or falling apart, more worried about me cutting myself. So things are moving apace. Um, I believe I spoke briefly about getting a hanger. Uh, that is. Looks like it's definitely going to happen. Uh, talked to one of the hangar owners, and I'm going to meet with him Wednesday and sign a contract. And good times. Going to have some place to actually do this work and not in a cramped space. I'm looking forward to that. Here I'm going through and beginning the kind of final cleanup and deburring of all the parts prior to priming uh, so that I can actually begin everything. Uh, or, you know, everything being the final assembly, I mean. Um, Again, something necessary to do, not really fun, but you know, you gotta do it. I'm actually uh, recording this, uh, the audio tracks, and, do, and editing the video about a week and a half after it actually happened. I had to fly commercial back to Texas uh, for my company, and I'll tell you what, nothing will make you wanna have your own airplane more than flying commercial. And it's a, it's a hell of a motivation to get back out there and continue working on the plane because, boy, I hate commercial. Uh, still years away, though. I had a couple people contact me about that, like, how do you stay motivated? And, you know, I don't know. You just kind of have to dig inside and, you know, figure out your own method for staying motivated. I mean, for me, weirdly, making these videos helps. Uh, you know, I didn't think they would, but they do. Uh, more deburring. I mean, this is a really boring video in the beginning, by the way, because, uh, you know, I'm documenting all this deburring, and I have sped this up quite a bit. Uh, but, you know, I want to show everything. That uh, 1006, which is what I'm working on there, uh, didn't... You're not supposed to do anything with that one except for these rivets that I'm doing right now, which are the four on top and then the, the four on either side, so that when you do final assembly on that one, that's all you're doing. You do just those. Uh, all the other ones, you do everything else. And right here, I'm using the uh, st the step to push through that hole. And I had I didn't realize I had the damn step spun backwards, so it took a little longer than it should have. I was like, man, this is taking forever. And then I was like, oh, whoops. And then it worked fine. And here I'm going through 10-18 and 10-19 and making sure I fully understand exactly which uh, elements I'm supposed to be, you know, dimpling which direction, etc. Uh, it's pretty clear. I just wanted to make sure and uh, not screw up. So that's that's what's going on here. It's also kind of cool, by the way. The so I have the PDF version of those plans that you see me poking at, and I I always have those open on my computer and I look at them, and it's uh, it's a 96 page PDF for the empennage, and at this point. Uh, I'm on page 74 of 96. So, you know, the, the light's at the end of the tunnel. I mean, I'm, I'm getting close, which is pretty cool. Uh, a little over a month ago, my wife had asked me how much longer, and I said probably about a month. So uh, I think at this point, it's probably about a month. I, I definitely uh, overestimated quite a bit. Oh, right here, this is important. So right here, uh, you have to make darn sure that you calculate exactly which holes to machine countersink and which holes not to machine countersink on the long rounds. Uh, there are several that you don't want to don't want to do, and they coincide with the ones that you didn't want to do on the skin. 
And so that's what I went through there is to, you know, count them off and make darn sure that I did not uh, machine countersink them. So you only do the same thing there. And then it's just a matter of going through and countersinking every other hole. And uh, that takes a little out of you. No big deal, though. Just uh, yet another thing you got to do. And once you get done with one, you got to do the other. Same old, same old. So one thing I decided I wanted to do here was uh, completely change my shop. Uh, even though I know I've got the hanger in the works, I didn't like how things were sit situated here. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to change... Uh, where this table is and move the other table which you is out of frame right now into frame right over there to the right doink there we go and you know make kind of open up the workspace and this this worked out nicely actually I, I like this um, this is several days later and I'm continuing on with the deburring process and then eventually the uh, dimpling process or beginning the dimpling process and so there you see me pulling the uh, vinyl off the inside of one of the skins and than the other and then what I'm going to go through is uh, I, I turned on my soldering iron and I'm working uh, you know drawing those lines with a soldering iron to pull the vinyl off in strips I've talked about this previously I, I just don't think you actually need to do this I think probably in the long run just pulling all the vinyl off is ample uh, you know in theory that vinyl's there to protect the aluminum for from bumps and scratches. I've talked to folks, and they say, you know, before you paint the plane, you're gonna go through and scuff all that aluminum up, something fierce. So really, uh, any scratch or any damage that would happen to the aluminum that would protect that the vinyl would protect is not something you need to worry about. And any damage that would that would go through the vinyl and into the aluminum would go through it anyway. So it's like, okay, what's the point of this exercise? And you know, I don't know. Uh, I kind of do it for peace of mind, I think more than anything. Uh, your mileage may vary. If you want to do it, go for it. I actually thought to going through and doing one with and one without just to test, and I did not do that. So here we go, uh, begin the process of dimpling. Uh, and I've gone through and I've made sure my DRDT2 is correctly configured per all the instructions. Uh, so hopefully I won't have any of the pillowing that I was seeing before. Uh, one thing I would recommend, you saw me flip it around real quick, is to have that curved piece on the outside like I have, you know, near me. It still is very painful to dimple, uh, especially those holes that are on uh, that curved piece specifically. Uh, you'll see a little of me trying to stand back and figure out, how the heck do I do this? Um, but mostly, you know, you just go back and forth. It just takes a lot of time because there are a lot of holes. Uh, and of course, there are two skins. So uh, you got to do it twice. But uh, not difficult. You know, just it was a hot day. Uh, this was the day after the rain. So of course, it was super humid and super hot. Fun. Got to love that. Uh, and then just uh, um, it gets difficult when the handle comes down and whacks the uh, that upward curve. So there, there was some interesting repositioning a couple of times. That's why you see me spinning it back and forth. And then here I'm trying to figure out, how am I supposed to get that done? Eventually I figured I'd just hold on to it by hand and uh, work it this way. And that, that actually worked out very nicely. Uh, I don't show the second one, but I actually do the second one a lot faster than the first one. Uh, the first one I had to kind of fight with it and figure out how I was going to do it. And here you begin, you start seeing me flipping it around and trying to figure out how I'm going to get some of these odd angles. You can actually get all of them uh, without any problem if you just angle everything correctly. There's a lot of flipping it back and forth to, to get the angles. Uh, here I'm doing the other top skins. Uh, going through, there's a couple, couple of the holes I wasn't sure if I was supposed to do or not based on instructions. And uh, I assumed that I was, so I did them. And here in a second, you're going to see me flip to the other top skin. And I will do the same thing here that I did before, and that is to use the soldering iron to make the lines and then start the process. I actually did it on both of them. I didn't show all of that. I, I probably should have, but uh, you've seen it once, you've seen it a million times. Anyway, uh, so in the tradition of trying to keep these videos shorter, like I had said originally, um, I'm going to keep this one at 10 minutes, and I have more to show you. 
looking forward to it. Got a, I'm much farther along, as always, of course. So thanks, everybody, and uh, see you next time.